Hi, I live alone. On this week's episode, I'm here in Copenhagen. And this week, we're going to talk about what's new and cool in Microsoft 365. Stay tuned, you will learn something. Hi everyone, Andy here, so nice to see you. Uh, greetings from Copenhagen. On this week's episode, I thought I'd take a look at what's new and cool in Microsoft 365, and there are more new features than you can shake a stick at. Now, if you enjoy the episode, please bump the like button up there. It does make a difference. And if you want to subscribe, we'd love to have you on board. And don't forget, if you want full videos, full training material, and that monthly Zoom call, check out my uh, Patreon site just there below. Okay, so without any further ado, let's jump in and check it out. Well, unless you've been living on the moon, you can't fail to have noticed that Microsoft Copilot is inbound. Yes, very shortly, Microsoft Copilot will be available to the masses. And the question is, is it going to live up to the hype? Well, essentially, it's OpenAI, aka Chat GPT, specifically for Microsoft 365. So here it will integrate seamlessly with Microsoft 365 applications, documents, presentations, and it will help you, and according to Microsoft, become a lot more productive. Well, it kind of feels like, you know, you go and see one of those movies like Terminator or something like one of those and it tells you how oh, it's going to be absolutely fantastic and then when you finally get there you're not so sure well we will we'll wait and see now what is exciting is the launch of the new security co-pilot service I am really looking forward to that but generally it's definitely a money maker for Microsoft and it's very exciting uh, so you know we'll wait and see what happens and you'll find out yourself it'll cost you just a mere $30 a month on top of your Microsoft 365 subscription. Hmm, so we'll wait and find out what you really think, won't we? Copilot on its way very shortly. Well, just released is the brand new version of Teams. Yes, 2.0 Teams, and it's been rewritten from the ground up. So now it even includes a dark mode. So I can simply go to a team, and if I want to create a team, I can simply go, yep, yeah, I want to create a team from one of these fabulous templates. So I want to do a, a team on adopting Microsoft 365. And again, this uh, may depend on your license, of course. So I'll give this a title of CPA demo team and uh, I will then I can put in a description click on create and off it goes and use one of these fabulous templates now just to remind you that if you're a teams admin you can control the templates and you can also customize your own and again you don't even need to wait for the team as well and it will go ahead and it will generate that team for you now other cool features is as well if you're familiar with the teams apps you know you can go into apps try doing a search for the admin tool and again if you're a teams admin you can now administer everything from microsoft teams but you'll find that the application is way faster than the original application so over the last few weeks i've talked at length about some of the new features that are coming into enter id aka uh, azure active directory so i'm going to come into protection tab and there's just a couple of things that I just want to mention here that you definitely need to know. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go into policies. And here in my policies, I've got a policy here called the Oslo conditional access policy. And I've gone in and I've set it up for specific users. I've chosen specific resources. Now, just a couple of new features here. Of course, you can select all cloud apps or specific apps. So I can come into the specific apps here and one that definitely uh, sticks out is the use of the new admin portals. So now you can do conditional access policies for admin portals, which is really, really useful. 
Uh, in addition, you've also got the new Office 365 portals here as well. So you can have specific conditional access policies for those portals. And check it out, it doesn't stop there. So now I can come into the conditions. And for example, you might specify a particular device platform. So in this case, Windows. Now it's well known that with passwordless authentication, we are making it harder and harder for hackers to do phishing attacks. But one kind of phishing attack, which is still a real issue, is a man in the middle attack. So uh, to one of the ways that we can stop that is like this. So I'm choosing, for example, the admin portals running on Windows machines, and I'm gonna go down to the session control here, and we have this new feature here called require token protection for sign-in sessions. So with a single click, you're protecting from uh, token replay attacks, and this, is such a fantastic feature. Check it out. Now, in addition, we are also getting a whole bunch of new features coming in to Enter ID. So the other week, I told you uh, a little bit about <clears throat> Uh, identity protection. And just to remind you that uh, identity protection has a new feature. If you go into the settings page here in N uh, identity protection, so here in the identity protection settings, again, we just have this very simple setting. Allow on-premises password change to reset the user risk. So assuming that you're using identity protection and perhaps even defender for identity, um, if a user, if you have password write back in a hybrid directory service, by just clicking this checkbox, if a user writes back their password, it will automatically raise the user risk level and flag that. And you can then investigate uh, whether that's a genuine user or potentially malicious. This is a, a very, very simple feature, but I think very powerful in terms of security. Now, a couple of years ago, I talked about dynamic group membership. And this is typically referred to as ABAC, or Attribute-Based Access Control. Well, ABAC continues to develop in Microsoft 365 as well as Enter ID. So for example, here, I'm gonna go into Captain Kirk's account and I'm gonna go ahead and enter his properties. And in his properties here, I'm gonna click on job information and we have a new field here. This is called employee hire date. So I can say I want the user to uh, be employed from Friday the 1st of December, 2023. And you think, okay, that's quite nice. That's kind of cool. Uh, I can click onto that. Actually, just one thing as well while I'm here. Um, just uh, again, the user can be a member and a guest or a guest. So for example, if this was external, um, he, he could be internal, but still a guest. Um, likewise, he could have an external user, again, as a member within your organization. So this is kind of new, and I did a, a video on this recently. Um, just a couple of things, though. I want to come into the job information, and as well as the employee hire date, just another feature that we have, as well as the manager field now, we also have a new sponsor field. So if you want to bring in a guest and perhaps have a sponsor within the organization, you can have up to five sponsors, and this is currently in preview, so it's pretty sweet. Okay, so that in, so I put the employee hire date, where can we actually go ahead and use this? Well, if I come into the groups uh, area here, and I'm gonna come into all groups, and what you might do is you might want to create yourself a new group. So in this case, I'm, I'm in Copenhagen, so I'm gonna say CPH, let's say marketing, and I'll call this marketing new starts, okay? So I can come in, I can put a description, but instead of assigned, I want to make this a dynamic user. One of the things you would definitely want to do is you would want to select an owner for the group here. So in this case, I've just got a, a demo uh, admin account here, so I can just use that. 
and uh, I'm going to say, yep, he's going to be the owner. And this is indeed where I now put in the dynamic query. And it goes a little bit like this. So we choose a property. So I'm going to say if the, let's say if they're in the sales department and let's say uh, department equals sales. Okay. And I want to add another expression, but this time uh, I'm going to scroll down and down the page here, you can see that we have um, some new features. So I'm going to type in the date here, which is 01-12-2023. And you can see that it goes ahead and it puts that date in. So what that means is now that I'm saving that, when the employee hits that date, the user will then become a member of that group. How cool is that? So Microsoft OneDrive continues to be enhanced. So with the nice new look here, you can see that we get nice previews at the top here. Plus, we also have a series of filters. So recent all documents here, you've got recent Word documents, Excel, PowerPoint, and PDF files that you can have as well. So again, super easy to find out what you've been working with. On top of that, you can search, obviously, which hasn't really changed, but one thing that has changed is the little filter here. So you can search just for your files, all files, including what you've got permission for, and files that you want to search for in the entire organization. And I covered this previously as well. You can also come in here and you can restore your OneDrive and you can restore up to 90 days. And if you saw my recent video on Microsoft 365 backup, then again, this is a, kind of looks a little bit like that. And you can customize how far back you want to go and exactly what you want to recover. So that is, a, again, a super, super feature. Now, on top of that, you can also add in a new folder. And we now have color schemes. So you can easily add a color scheme to your folder. And again, that will just make kind of things a little bit easier to find your way around. So OneDrive, definitely cool and definitely welcome updates there. So one feature that I'm super looking forward to is the new Microsoft 365 backup service. This has been long overdue and is currently being supported, of course, by third party products like Veritas. Well, here you'll be able to go in and back up your OneDrive, Exchange and SharePoint. And with a single click of a button, you'll be able to back up your entire tenant. How cool is that? Now, in addition, you'll be able to go back and finally we can come in and we can restore data. So in this case, if we have an issue with, let's say, uh, a user's mailbox, I can simply go in, I can select the user's mailbox that I want, either one individually or them all, and then just simply select and restore. This is going to be a game changer and I'm really looking forward to this when it's finally released very soon. So there you have it. That's it for this week's episode. Hope you really enjoyed it. I'm about to go and explore inside here. I'll see you next week. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.